Tonight, Donald Trump is taking a victory lap out on the campaign trail, speaking to a crowd in Virginia where he continued to push some of the 30 plus lies that he told on stage at that debate last night. As we saw, President Biden did little to fact check him in real time, allowing Trump to peddle these lies and half truths, if we want to call them that, and also pivoting completely, doing a complete 180 at times when he was pressed for answers to questions. You had no terror at all during my administration. You had Roe v. Wade and everybody wanted to get it back to the states. He's willing to, as we say, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month and kill the baby. He gets paid by China. He's a Manchurian candidate. Will you take any action as president to slow the climate crisis? Well, let me just go back to what he said about the police. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th and worry that you'll do it again? Well, I don't think too many believe that. And let me tell you about January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. And as Nancy Pelosi said, it was her responsibility, not mine. She said that loud and clear. She did not say that, and it was not her responsibility, as we have said many times here on this show. Meantime, Anthony Scaramucci, Trump's former White House communications director, is here with us tonight, who is also the author of the new book, From Wall Street to the White House and Back. And, and, and obviously, you know, the headline coming out of this, Anthony, was that Biden did, his performance did overshadow what, what Trump just did there, his own performance last night. I mean, it doesn't take away from the fact that he did lie. He downplayed January 6th. He refused three times to accept the 2024 election results without his conditions that he attached to them. What did you make of Trump's performance last night? Well, he, he told a lie every 100 seconds, if you like factored in everything, but the the problem with Trump's performance was the split screen. And so whoever prepped uh, President Biden didn't explain to him that he had to be alert and look right into the barrel of that camera. Uh, and he looked very distracted and he looked a little off. And so no matter what Trump was saying, I think most people were focused on the physical features of what was going on on the other side of the split screen. So, uh, yeah, you know, look, Trump is a liar. Look, Trump's brand is that he's going to tell a lie every 100 seconds. Uh, in, the, in, in my book, we counted 30,450 lies. That's right out of the Washington Post uh, Pinocchio alerts uh, over four years. So he's going to lie. I mean, the, the question now is uh, Joe Biden is staying in the race. I get that. Uh, so now what is the, going to be the positioning of Joe Biden and how are we going to prove to the American public yeah, but, but, that Joe Biden's up for this job over the next four but years? 50 million people watched last night. And if you're a voter <laughs> who doesn't watch Trump's rallies like we do closely or, or constantly cover him, I mean, you don't know what's a lie and what's a truth or what's an exaggeration. And so you may be watching that and thinking, OK, well, I guess this is actually what happened on January 6th. The officers did usher in the rioters, which obviously also is not true. Well, Caitlin, listen, remember, this is about image. This is not necessarily about substance. This is a popularity contest. It's not a hiring decision for the American people. We have to call it the way it is. Uh, but my message to the Biden campaign is Donald Trump on October the 7th, 2016, was under the gun. That was the night of the Access Hollywood tape release. Uh, he had had an OK first debate. Uh, but he girded himself for that second debate. And I think the message here uh, is to be relentless and to get on the offense as quickly as possible. He did a good yeah. job today, but he's got to build on that over the next coming weeks uh, to let the American people know that he can do this job. You know, you, you're pointing out that 48 million people saw him having a hard time putting sentences together, saw him having a hard time rebutting. And then the last thing which, which bothered me is the uh, he couldn't complete the two minutes. You know, Jay kept saying to him, hey, you got 80 more seconds. Yeah, what do you you're, want to add? You're he didn't have anything to say. Yeah, President Biden on that. And obviously you would see Trump, wh whose mic was muted, sitting there. And Scott Jennings, when you looked at that and you saw how Trump was handling this. I mean, he didn't exactly cover himself in glory either last night. If you were watching it just from his perspective, I mean, they're counting as it a win because they're grading it on a curve, essentially, because of how President Biden did. I mean, what's a win? You get, what was you a get, new policy that Trump announced last night? Name one. He's not the president. He's the challenger he's to the incumbent. He's running to be president. I know, and he's running 
just like he was in 2016 against the de facto incumbent. This time it's the real incumbent. That's the beauty of being the challenger. You don't have to solve all the world's problems today. You just have to convince the American people that the incumbent is doing a bad job and they should fire him and hire you. Now, I think they've decided to fire Biden. It's obvious. Have they quite decided to rehire Trump yet? Close, but maybe not yet. And he still has to close that deal. The problem with this debate is not Donald Trump. No one's going to remember a thing he said. They'll only remember what they saw of Joe Biden. You know, I was, I was privy to uh, some uh, dial groups that went on last night. And what was interesting was, on the substance of things, uh, e economic policy, health care, on abortion rights, on a whole range of things, Biden did much better than Trump. I mean, he people agreed with Biden's point of view. Uh, Trump did very poorly, and he did particularly poorly when he, with, with his nasty asides, he did particularly poorly when he claimed things that were patently untrue that everyone knows uh, was, un you know, this notion that he was playing the peacemaker role on January 6th was laughable. People understood that. So I think people paid more attention, yeah. Scott, than you think. I, I agree. And it does still matter if candidates lie. It does. I know we're in the Trump era where it's sort of the received wisdom that it doesn't matter if the person who's running to be president of the United States just openly lies. But I think, as David said, we saw well, from some of the immediate data last night, that's not true. And I think that's going to continue to be a problem for Trump for the next seven months. I mean, four months. does Joe Biden ever lie? He did not. In, not He absolutely does not. Donald Trump <laughs> willfully <laughs> Willfully goes out. You're saying out, Joe Biden never lies. He willfully goes out and misrepresents things and is and intentionally with no shame whatsoever. And people okay. don't want to see that in their leadership. They well, at, at least we got to hear two people who want the nuclear codes talk about their golf handicaps and who has a better, <laughs> one, better one. Anthony Scaramucci, Kate Bedingfield, David Axelrod, Scott Jennings. Great to have all of you breaking down what so many people are still trying to process from last night.